Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today, I am bringing you one of the most advanced magnesium projects in the world, and that is Latrobe Magnesium. The ASX code is LM for mother, LMG. And uh, the reason I'm keen to talk to David Patterson today, their CEO, many of you will see that in the news recently, we've seen headlines such as catastrophic Chinese magnesium shortage because the Chinese had cornered the market for a long time. So it's very exciting. I'm, I'm delighted that their chief executive officer, David Patterson, is joining me today to talk about the project, talk about the value to shareholders, and also a little bit of understanding about why we have got to this position of uh, China pretty much having kept all the, uh, I guess, control of the supply market, and now we are in deep doo-doo. David Patterson, somebody who knows more about the magnesium market than most people, welcome to Small Caps. Great to see you. Uh, thanks, Gary, for that introduction. Uh, well, you correct, know, I mean, you, sorry, I, I, I just want to start off, David, by asking you, because and many of our um, listeners might not know who Latrobe Magnesium are. So can you just give us a brief overview before we get into the detail? Okay. As you said, the Latrobe Magnesium is a small ASX listed company. We've been around for a long time. Uh, we have had to work through our own processes because this is a, a first to make magnesium out of brown coal fly ash. And we've used very reputable external third parties, both in the laboratory sense and CSIRO, for example, doing all our smelter work. So we take one step at a time. Uh, we've had to also um, go through a Hazelwood power station shutdown, which has caused us an issue, mainly because of the mineralogy that we've had to change our process for to be able to process it properly. So let me just step back a moment and go, how do you make magnesium? So we have, we have two, two processes. One's an alkali process mm -hmm. and one is an acid process. And the, and the difference between the two is really the hardness or the mineralogy of the mineral in the brown coal fly ash. Every bit of brown coal fly ash is separate. They're two different processes. So in an acid process, what we do is we, we put hydrochloric acid and we precipitate out mag chloride. And then we turn that mag chloride into mag oxide and put that in a smelter. And because it's a mad oxide, there's no CO2 going up the stack, which is there normally is. So we're carbon, we're carbon friendly. And um, then we, as I said, we vacuum off, we, we heat it up to 1200 degrees C using gas and we, vacu and we vacuum off the magnesium. And then the product that we have left is we actually make a Portland cement substitute. So magnesium itself, does it only come from brown coal fly ash? No, magnesium has never come from brown coal fly ash that's, before. That's what I'm trying have, to get my head yeah, around. Yeah, we, we have a patent on that, exclusive patent worldwide, wherever there's a brown coal fly ash power station. Yep. It normally comes from dolomite, which is the yeah. seventh most um, abundant mineral in, in on the Earth's crust. Yep. But... What dolomite is, is a mag carbonate. So it's MgCO3. So every time you heat that up, what you've got to do first off when you heat it up is you release CO2. Um, and it's a big emitter. The Chinese make 85% of the market. Right. But they, on a good day, they'll emit 21 tonnes of CO2 per tonne of mag. On a 21 tonnes of CO2 per one tonne of mag? Correct. Wow. Okay, yep. And on a bad day, if they use coal to do it, that can that can grow up to, depending on the, the type of coal, that can go to 40 tonnes. So they call mag the green metal, but you've got to be very careful on the process used in the mag because the emissions at primary stage can be very high, like the Chinese. So some people like Tata Industries have come out publicly and said, we're not buying China mag because there is too many, too much emissions in the primary product. So to, to explain that very quickly, aluminium produces traditionally 12 tonnes of CO2 per tonne of mag. We actually in our process produce 10 tonnes because we use gas. So we actually have versus the Chinese that, as I said, on a good day, there's 21. So we're more than half uh, of the CO2 emissions 
Plus, when you put it up next to aluminium, we're not only a third lighter and, and we're twice as strong, but we also start our, if you like, CO2 emission reduction in a car the day one it's used because they're producing 12 in the primary metal, we're producing 10. So automatically, it's a great um, product for the car, car business to make cars out of. Uh, they only need uh, 5 to 6%. It's that much stronger than aluminium. They only need five to six percent in an aluminium sheet with aluminium to um, make a car panel, and that's that's been the big process process improvement. Hundred percent recyclable, both aluminium and mag. So it's a great material to use versus things like lithium that uh, are bad to recycle. Oh, is it okay? Yeah, well, it's very lithium, as you, like some rare earths. Uh, are, can be a problem in the initial and the recycling, the recycling uh, capacity of lithium is a lot harder. Where do you get your supply of material from? Well, at the moment we have your lawn and they have, we believe they have, based on their estimates of their landfill, they call it their ash landfill and what they're producing until they stop in 2028, we'll have enough to supply 30, a 30,000 tonne plant of mag uh, for 20 years. So oh more than goodness. enough for them. Just from that one? Just plant. from that one. They're producing 300-odd thousand tonnes per annum. Uh, Hazelwood have an ash dam, but, you know, we had an agreement with Hazelwood. Uh, we don't expect to deal with the company that owns Hazelwood at the moment, but maybe in the future when the government will own it, um, we might be able to, we'll, we can deal with the government. We can also bring in another... Uh, feedstock that we've tested that we can use through the asset approach. So we can, without any doubt, have the sufficient resources to last a long time on our plant and we could build it up. Um, you know, the, the uh, yeah. You've got, you've got two technologies though, haven't you? You've got the acid and the alkaline. Mm -hmm. Why both? And when do you use one and not the other? And what's the difference between the two? Big difference between the two because yep. one's acid and one, one's, the, one's the opposite end of the one's, scale. One's good and one's not so good. Yeah. Our, uh, the acid approach is more expensive, but we capture all the hydrochloric acid and we recirculate it so nothing escapes. The alkali approach is not as, um, you know, isn't an acid approach and therefore it's not as, as um, what do you want to call it, uh, aggressive is maybe the right word. Uh, it's cheaper. Uh, it does things completely differently uh, in how we put that process together, but it's cheaper. The good things is cheaper. And we just, the thing that drives us is the mineralogy of the fly ash. If the, if the mineralogy is too hard, you've got to use acid. If it's okay. softer, if it's a softer material, then you use your alkali. Yep. And for example, we, we did alkali with hazelwood. We've done alkali with RWE Power, who we've been dealing with since 2011. They're the biggest, the biggest power company in Germany. And, um, uh, you know, and as I said, but we had to develop um, the acid process for dealing with the lawn mineralogy because it is so hard, the uh, actual flash. David, you, you, you've been with Latrobe for some time now. I just want to know from an investor point of view, why has it taken so long to get this to this point? Because right now you are two-thirds of the way through design. Uh, you look like you're going into production in 2023. So we're getting to the point again. Was it the chemistry and getting that right and getting that technology right that has taken the time up front? Probably two things. One, it's, it's always the chemistry and testing. Um, work that you have to do. We had to reinvent the alkali process when Hazelwood closed down because we they wouldn't give us supply uh, who we thought we were going to use. Uh, so we had to redevelop. We had to develop that acid approach. I mean, we had a little bit of a leg in because of what we we're doing with the alkali, but it was really a whole new system. Um, and and um, yeah, so that was probably the main reason, and that's as I said, because of the different mineralogy uh, as well. So it's really that testing just to make sure that everything is correct. Going through a pre feasibility feasibility study takes time, yep. engineering studies they all take time. Um, done all that now, and now we're ready to go. 
So when you say you're ready to go, what's the capex to go into construction and where are you going to get that funding from? Uh, we, we're looking at the moment 45 mil. Once the design engineering is finished, we hopefully we'll drive that down to 40 mil. Um, and we, we basically, because of our uh, advanced finding and now uh, our the demonstration plan is categorised as an eligible expenditure under the R&D scheme, the federal R&D scheme, we get effectively 50% of our capex back. And that goes a long way to, to helping fund the plan. And the other 50%, we're looking at two cornerstone investors. Uh, so really 20 million, 20 million. We've looked at two cornerstone investors at which would give us 10. We've, we've got a 4 million grant sitting before the state government of Victoria. And of course, we've just raised 3 million with an option to come, we believe, which, will, which, is, at four, which is at 4 cents. So that today's price would easily be exercised in two years. That helps us pay the back end. That helps us pay the back end of the retention. So that's really raised the other 6 million we need. So, so there's, there's no problem with the raise. You you don't see that you'll have to go back to market. You've just done a raise, as you just said, at, at, at of, of uh, three million. Uh, I think that was two and a half cents. So correct. They'll be happy because uh, you had a really nice run on the market. What do you think drove your share price recently? Was it this the headlines of the fact that China is not going to be supplying very much magnesium in the future? That's been a major factor. I mean, we've seen. I've seen. Compare there's only two companies listed in the states, and we've seen we've seen uh, them move up. Ones are hopeful. Um, <laughs> I'll put it in that bracket. Uh, they've moved from they've moved from seven they moved from eight cents to seventy cents. Goodness me! China. And and the one producer that we believe has a few capex problems, capital problems at the moment, so they can't actually supply into 2022, but we're not sure. Um, they've gone from 20 cents to uh, 80 cents. So you see that China, because uh, has has driven a lot of that. We've only gone from well, we're only two and a half to, to seven. We're also telling the story now because we're at a play, place where we can. Yep. And. We're conservative from that perspective because a lot of people talk about doing things and hasn't been done, and we've been around a while. Uh, and a lot of people, I've done that in the mag industry, and I, I've always said I won't speak at an International Mag Association's conference until I'm building the plant or built it right. because there has been, since we've been a member over the last 15 odd years, uh, there has been no new mag um, producer in the Western world. It's all been in China. It's all been in China. How did we let, how did we get to this point? Because now we're in a bit of trouble. As I said, potentially a catastrophic mag shortage because of what's going on. Um, but you're, and I want people to be aware of this because we're going into this sort of zero carbon emissions. We're going into uh, all of this, these challenges uh, with the ESG, et cetera, et cetera. But you are going to be a green product essentially, aren't you? because you can work it to such an extent that you're not like the Chinese magnesium producers. Yeah. You're different because of this patented technology and how you produce the mag in the end, end process. Is that correct? Yeah. There's, there's two elements to that, which are a walk-up start, is, as I said earlier, we don't – when you're making – we make, of course, mag and we make cement. When you make mag, you usually start with a mag carbonate. We start with a mag oxide. So – fundamental difference of around about nine to 10 tonnes of CO2 per tonne of mag. Walk up star, it's because of the feedstock. With, with, with uh, our cement product, normally you start with lime and it can be anywhere up to one tonne. Uh, Australia is usually a bit more efficient than that, but it can be up to one tonne of CO2 because it's a calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Mm -hmm. You start with lime, you heat it up and you make your calcium oxide. We start with calcium oxide. So we don't start with those feedstocks. And it's in our feedstocks. It's embedded. We can't, you know, it's like you can't make magnesium. I, I, I remember talking to the Ash Foundation and the black coal guys were there and say, David, you're fantastic. You're going to be able to make mag out of black coal. I said, no, I can't. Well, black coal fly ash. And I said, no, I can't. There's no mag in black coal fly ash. <laughs> I can't put in things that aren't there. 
So it's so, only in brown coal fly ash that you find the mag. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. because what we're do what we're dealing with in the valley is probably uh, in in round figures, seven, call it fifteen percent mag oxide per ton of that we can get out per ton of um, or fifteen percent mag oxide in the fly ash to about twenty. So that's what we're aiming for. And then the other the in, in your lawn, it's all different. In your lawn, we make five other products. In Hazelwood, we'd make three because of what's in the fly ash. So we, we actually make good, we recycle 100% of the material into, you know, basically five to six products. So you're a waste stuff. recycler. You're a waste recycler. Yeah, yeah very me, much right, Gary. We're running out of time. I, uh, tell me, the, give me the numbers. We, we talked about the CapEx. Uh, you, throw me out the numbers of when you start to produce, because, of course, with a critical shortage, I'm saying, you know, obviously the magnesium price will be going up. You guys are looking at, you're a waste recycler. So from a, a emissions point of view, there's going to be some credits there as well. Um, just yeah. give me the numbers for our investors out there as to what you see when you go into production. Well, what we're looking at, we have a, as I said, our, our first plant will be just the 1,000 step. The first step will be 1,000 tonnes. So we'd be then going with the demonstration plant to three, 3,000 tonnes. We're starting to relook at that now. And we have put out an investment presentation that has these numbers in it. Uh, so we may, because of the Chinese shortfall, we'll probably go to 10,000 tonnes. And we're talking an EBITDA there of some 40 million. And if you put a PE around that of 10, because we can go a lot higher, you're talking market cap for the company of around 400 million. And at the moment we're, we're under a hundred million. Um, so. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, there you heard it. There's a massive expansion. They are going into production in 2023. David's got all the, the all the decks are, are lined up, and of course, there's a critical shortage. Um, David, we have run out of time. It's a very exciting story. The ASX code was LMG. Um, I always finish this way, David. Uh, we spoke about it briefly. I want to know the three reasons for our investors that are listening today. Three reasons why you think now is a great time for people to sit up and, and take a good look at magnesium, uh, Latrobe magnesium. Well, first off. We think we we are one of the most advanced projects. There's only one other in the world where we are at the moment. So we can get on. We believe we'll be online in production in 2023. So yes, we'll be able to solve some of the issues because we think the China situation will be around for most of 2022. Secondly, the upside, as we mentioned, in relation to the just the finances itself. So we. We talked about having a walk-up start of 50% of our capital costs in the initial plan from, mm -hmm. from R&D. So we have to give up our tax de 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 depreciation, but that's nothing to get half of the costs. So all of a sudden, people get a benefit of that as well. So we think that financial plus more plus the 10,000 tonner shows the numbers that will um, look, look solid for investors. As I mentioned earlier, that, can act, that will grow very quickly because of the number of projects we have on board that can take it all 10 times higher. Then, of course, it's the CO2, as you mentioned, Kerry. We're pushing down. We, we'll start with half the emissions, normal uh, industry average. Then we'll push down to hopefully zero to one by doing renewables. And uh, also there's a great safety benefit in what we're doing with the waste recycling because of the ash. Uh, it is very fine. It's got silicon in it, can cause silicosis, so it's a good thing oh. for the community. You know, it gets into people's lungs, hardens lungs. Wow, I did not know that. Okay. So in, in sorry, I, I did say we're going to finish up with that, but you just mentioned silicosis. I've got to bring it up. So <laughs> in, in, in with, with your company recycling this material, um, it, it, instead of it being in the environment. If it gets going... airborne, yeah, if it gets airborne, if you're in, ever in the valley, you'll see mainly from the power stations, there is dust around. Um, so that's that's one thing. If 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 the dust, if the ash plant ponds dry out, then if it takes to the air, then that can happen again. So, you know, there's a community benefit 
as well as it jobs for the valley, of course. But you know, it's, I mean, I say that as an uh, as an afterthought, but of course, that's where everyone's heading today as well. And it's a great great business because we see there's a lot of other uses of just not automobiles. There's hydrogen storage. There's a whole lot of battery storage that they're doing in the states. Um, there's a whole lot of other uses, and we believe adjunct businesses that can can form around us because we're the primary metal. Yeah, and you'll be the primary supplier. And ladies and gentlemen, they're not a miner, they're a waste recycler, which can only be good as we head into this very strong ESG environmental, social governance, and all the things that surround that. David Patterson, CEO of Latrobe Magnesium. I can't wait to speak to you again early next year and see how you're going because this shortage of supply is not going away. Thank, thanks, thanks so much Jerry. for joining us on Small Caps today. Okay, thank you.